Uh, today, we meet on a briefing on the persecution of religious and ethnic minorities in Afghanistan, and we're moving now to the United Six for six minutes. Uh, respected members of committee, thank you for uh, allowing United Six to speak for Afghan minorities. Uh, we are United Nations affiliated international uh, nonprofit NGO to empower those in need, especially disadvantaged and minority communities around the world with humanitarian aid, advocacy, and education programs. We have 10 chapters in Asia, Europe, and North America. We have an office in Peshawar, Pakistan also. So Ghazni, Jalalabad, and Kabul are the three major cities in Afghanistan where minorities, families are concentrated in large numbers. United Six has been providing uh, legal assistance and humanitarian aid in these cities uh, for the past many years. Our first case in Afghanistan started in 2010 uh, with the Harinder Kaur and her daughter, whom we provided help in taking asylum in Canada with the help of Canadian government because her husband was kidnapped and then beheaded. So after that, so many times minorities were attacked brutally. Um, they were forced to pay Zazia verbal and written threats, including ultimatums to leave the country, uh, social boycotts, um, not even uh, drinking water from their fountains, uh, which they have in front of their shops and for, uh, in front of their houses. They were called uh, kafirs. Uh, kids couldn't go to schools. Uh, women's and young girls couldn't go out because of kidnapping threats. So this was the life they were living in Afghanistan. So then after Gurdwara attack in 2020, uh, this was the day when all the NGOs and Afghan Sikhs and Hindus decided to move temporarily to India so then we can bring them to safe place like Canada and USA. So till now, as uh, Balpreet said, so total 95 families have reached New Delhi, India, from different parts of Afghanistan. United Six and other NGOs are the only help for them. They have no help from Indian government, uh, not even their IDs. So last year, United Six started a help desk in New Delhi for these families, so where they are getting uh, medical treatment, including special tests as needed, urgent assistance with the needs of uh, pregnant mothers in government hospitals and life-sustaining needs of newborn babies, including immunizations, emergency medical procedures, uh, facilitation for UNHCR related issues like issuing uh, refugee cards, renewal of the cards for previously Afghan nationals residing in New Delhi, uh, ration distribution to needy Afghan families, COVID-19 rapid tests, assistance in temporary settlement of Afghan families in India. So what are the challenges they having now? They do not have any identification. Uh, if they make any identification, then they cannot get their refugee cards, refugee status. So they are just in between. Um, and for refugee status, UNHCR says they came to India on a visa which is not suitable to get a refugee status. So these are their challenges. They, their kids cannot get education. They have no jobs. They're not getting proper medical treatments. So their only hope is us, Canadian government. So I will request Canadian government, so please stop a cultural genocide. Now I will ask uh, Gurvinder Singh to add a few points more and please wrap it up. Thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so I would first and foremost uh, thank uh, uh, you know everyone for allowing us this gathering and for listening uh, to this testimony about what is happening and what has transpired over the past many, many years. Uh, one number uh, or a few numbers I think that are striking is the fact that over 100,000 Sikhs and Hindus resided in Afghanistan just a few decades ago. That number dwindled down to 626 prior to the Kabul attack. Now that number is below 100. So that goes to show that a vibrant, robust community, which has its cultural heritage, which has its religious heritage, which has its economic structure, embedded in the, in the nation, has been gone and has been dismantled and, ha and has had a genocide perpetrated against it. So we're concerned about our religious institutions, about our cultural institutions that are hundreds of years old, about the caretaking of those. We're concerned about the safety and security of the community. And if 
the Canadian government does not step up, then this will be known in history as a time where a minority was forcefully evicted, eradicated, or killed and completely decimated from the map of a nation. And I think it is inherently, it behooves us so we can step up and really uh, provide assistance to those who literally, who literally have no one else to turn to. Thank you. Mr. Singh wanted to add something. I believe Mr. Singh is in the process of adding information. And I'd like to hear him. Question. It, uh, there's two things. So one thing is um, the law in written format and then the law in practice. So it's completely different when you go to practice. Uh, Sikhs, Hindus, and minorities have actually had to pay the jizya, which is a tax for all non-Muslims living in Afghanistan. So that's first and foremost. Secondly, the targeting and the wanton destruction of minorities is at such a state that after the Kabul bomb blast, Sikhs were not even allowed to have a funeral procession in peace. The procession was targeted, there were bombs placed along the routes. There were bombs placed in front of Sikh homes in Gurdwaras. And then after the procession actually gets to the funeral pyre to do the funeral, then there's another bomb that goes off. So this is a continued targeting, continued assassination. And in, in short form, it's a complete genocide of minorities who are at any odds with those who do not profess their faith. And again, uh, even to live, you are just trying to breathe. It's, it's difficult because you pay the tax simply to exist. You have to, you have to live in inferiority and you have to live in fear. And a uh, quick uh, response uh, from Mr. Singh, and if possible, uh, Chavenda. The results of, of this internet assigned warfare and these different warlords coming to power have been a mass exodus for religious societies. I mean, I'm sorry, for religious minorities and a genocide of the religious minorities. Those are the two results is a mass exodus Thank and a mass killing. Thank you, uh, Mr. Singh.